that takes the cake is Ho Hocus and Jay. Welcome to the Hohokus Heritage Keepers Project, episode Off to the Races, the history of the racetrack. At one time or another, we have all driven down Racetrack Road. Many people even have Racetrack Road as part of their home address. While it may be viewed as just a conduit to Route 17, the origin of the road is much more profound. As the name suggests, it was once the site of a racetrack that ran roughly where Arbor Road is today. The history of Hohokus would be incomplete without the exciting story involving horse races, auto races, and air shows that took place on the fairgrounds that flourished for nearly seven decades. It is a rich story complete with triumphs and tragedy. This was no ordinary racetrack. It began with horse racing and evolved to auto racing. The Hohokus racetrack was considered one of the more important and historic tracks in the United States for many years. It was an important stop on the first circuit of water racing from 1920 to 1938. Alan Brown, a famous racetrack historian, wrote about the track in his book, The History of the American Speedway. And I quote, One of the most famous sprint car tracks on the East Coast was the Hohoka Speedway near Ridgewood, New Jersey. Like Legion Ascot in California, almost every top driver ran Hohokas at one time or another. Let's start at the beginning. The racetrack was founded around 1870. Over the years, the track had many names, including Hohokus Driving Park, the Hohokus Speedway, the Bergen County Fairgrounds, and the Hohokus Racetrack, but the dirt track's nickname was the Dust Bowl. It started up as a simple dirt course in the late 1860s, and a horse driving club started up in 1879. The track began to thrive as an event center as many horse races and week-long county fairs would be held there. Whatever the name, the people came by the thousands by horse and wagon, horseback, stagecoach, and train. The Erie Railroad even ran special trains to Hoka Station when events were being held. History was made on July 4th of 1910 when the trolley line started service to Hohokus, which greatly enhanced attendance. The track had success, but really took off in 1905 when Samuel Nagel purchased the business and the fortune of the track turned around. He was a lover of horses, and he understood the racing market and how the public wanted to be entertained. He owned the track for 24 years until 1929 when he died. During that time, he renamed the facility the Hohokus Driving Park and set about to get local, county, and state interest in his track. He expanded the grounds, acquiring additional property whereby the track covered almost 30 acres. He built a grand viewing stand for the spectators and made attending his events a spectacle to behold. There were celebrations held at the clubhouse. The horses and carriages were paraded around the track so the attendees could be seen. He had clam bakes and waltz dances after the races. He also held the best social events of the season. He promoted local horses and races, and these horses dominated the racing season in 1925, and that was also what kept the crowds coming back. Not everything at the track was successful or smooth. In August of 1912, the Greater Aviation Company sponsored an air show and aviation meet. The track was fully decorated for the big aviation events. Over 10,000 people came for the day. The show was to have airplane displays, bomb throwing contests, monoplane demonstrations, passenger rides, skydiving, altitude flying, and at the end of the day, a cross-country airmail delivery to Ridgewood. Well, it didn't go as planned. Several aviators got lost, Two in engine trouble, another was late, and the crowd got restless and felt scammed. They got the money back, but an airmail delivery did occur. The pilot, Joseph Richter, managed to drop the 40-pound bag of mail on the grounds of the old YMCA on Godwin Avenue before flying off into the sunset. This was the first airmail delivery in the state of New Jersey. The racetrack also hosted the annual Bergen County Fair, which brought huge crowds to our town. The fair of 1914 had the renowned aviatrix Ruth Liu, known as the Queen of the Air. She and her flying circus performed stunts in a Wright Brothers biplane over the track. At this fair, motorcycle race events were held, and two world records were set for a dirt half-mile track for motorcycles. There were many other activities at the fair as well. There was an auto show, a trap shooting contest, a trick riding exhibition, a five mile bike race, sword swallowing, an elephant display, a dog show, and gladiator contests. One year the fair had a special event 
wrestling contest where the Masked Marvel took on all comers in spirited matches. Motorcycle races were also special events, and two world records were set at the fair. The crowds at the fair continued to grow, and Babe Ruth and several states, state governors even attended events. Hollywood even made it to the track. Two movies were made on the track rounds in 1914. The first was a silent movie named Polly of the Circus, and was filmed by the Goldwyn Movie Picture Corporation. The horse race and some fair scenes were filmed using local people in the cast, crowd, and race. Though the track had gained popularity, auto racing didn't start to gain popularity at the track until 1917. After World War I ended, people wanted to be entertained. Showcasing races every year brought thousands to watch this new racing form. Car racing became the event center's big event. It was something only a few would dare to spectate due to the cars creating a dust bath at every race. Still, auto racing was a big hit at the center. Over the years, the cars became more powerful and reached more incredible speeds. Since the track and stadium were originally built for horse racing, danger lurked in every turn. Then, in 1938, tragedy struck. Imagine this. It's July 4th, Independence Day. A tremendous crowd is gathered to watch a big car race at the track. Dust and dirt fill the air, but the stadium is still crowded and buzzing with excitement. At the height of the race, two drivers, Vince Brem and Henry Garand, in 9th and 10th position collide, and the wheels of their open wheel racers lock together. Suddenly, Francis Fanning, a substitute driver, was struck and thrown from his car to the middle of the track. As both drivers fight to regain control, the cars swerve and crash into the stands filled with nearly 6,000 spectators. In the end, 18 people were left injured, some seriously. One person, a child, 10-year-old Robert Thompson, was tragically killed. Without much negotiation, auto racing was outlawed in Ho Hocus, and the event center would only last until 1950 when it was sold for residential development. While the story ends in a tragedy, the existence of the racetrack is memorialized today as Racetrack Road. Over the 70-some odd years, the grounds were used for numerous venues. Our town tapestry is graced with the past of trotting horses, horse racing, horse stables, livestock exhibitions, county fairs, carnivals, parades, movie making, dining and dancing events, fireworks, air shows, auto racing, automobile exhibits, stock car racing, motorcycle racing, baseball games, and vegetable gardens, also known as the World War II Ve Victory Gardens. On Arbor Street and Racetrack Road, you can see this commemorative plaque telling of the unique place it had in the hearts of the townspeople. Today, the speed limit on Racetrack Road tops out at 25 miles per hour, but I'll never ride down the Racetrack Road without thinking about the spirit of our past and what happened here. In closing, let me introduce you to Chris Economaki of Ridgewood. At 14, he became interested in racing and attended the races at the Hocus Track and other racetracks. Chris sold the National Auto Racing News there and was a talented writer and covered race events from 1934 to 1938, having his work published in the Racing News. He became the owner, publisher, and editor of the National Speed Sports News, a premier racetrack newspaper in the U.S. today. He later went on to voice auto racing for three decades and was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Thank you for listening and keeping history alive. Please check out the entire series of the Hocus Heritage Keepers episodes on this channel.